everyone. This is Steve Weintraub with Collider at the Cinema Center at the Toronto International Film Festival. Um, I really want to give a huge thank you to Range Rover Sport for being our sponsor this year and allowing us to cover both indie films, television, huge movies. I, I, just a huge thank you. Um, and now, uh, why we're here. How are you doing today, sir? Uh, really good, actually. Uh, we've just come from Venice. I'm excited to bring our show to Toronto. Um, and uh, yeah, looking forward to the response. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you, I've seen some of your show. I apologize for not having seen everything uh, prior to this interview, but it is fantastic. And Thank you. It, and it explains how the reviews out of Venice are so incredible. Uh, the response in Venice was extraordinary. I think that the fascist period in Italy uh, is really a trauma that the Italians have never really faced. And, uh, and so to have this show presented in that setting, it's a festival that was started uh, by the fascists uh, in 36, I think. Um, so to have that come back round um, and presented to them is, was, was an amazing thing. Luca, I just have to talk about your incredible work in this. Um, for people watching, they are not going to think when they see the picture of you in the show, they are not going to think you're the same actor. Like they're going to think it's another person and you are just like, you not, you know what I mean? So I'm so blown away by your work in it. Um, talk a little bit about the physical transformation and what you went through to, to, to become Mussolini. Um, thank you first of all and yeah it was a it was a very big journey um and it was also painful in a way because uh as an actor you if you want to reach the character in a way uh i learned that you have to suspend the judgment uh, and so for these seven months i suspended my judgment on him to try to in a way understand him and that was that was really 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 painful it was really painful for me um but the work with joe was was amazing and and we create this character together and of course there was a physical transformation and i can tell you that one day my mother was on set and she didn't recognize me so i i passed in front of her and and that was also painful <laughs> I, I would say um yeah but it was a big journey and i and i really have to thank joe and his art so one of the things about the the work is you break the fourth wall and you're talking at the camera. And as an actor, you're trained to always avoid the camera. So how long did you, until you felt comfortable talking when the camera's right there and you're talking at it? No, it was quite, quite natural, I would say, because the, the eyes are always falling there in a way, no? So in a normal movie, it's an error, but for us, it was something that we, that we were searching for. Um, and at the beginning, we, we had some question, what, what is that? Why he is talking there? Who is talking with, uh, with the story, with, 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 with who? And, and in the end, we said he's talking with, with the present, with the audience now in this moment, uh, like, I don't know how it is here, but in Italy, we have a lot of politicians and in Europe that are using social media to, to reach people in their house and their privacy. Uh, and so I, I really, I was, I was inspired from, from these people also. I'm going to be coming to you in a second, but I need to do to one more, which is what is it like for you having, you're carrying an extra, I only know weight, I don't know kilo, so 45 pounds and you've shaved your head and you, what is it like where you're, when you're leaving set and going home and having to literally carry that weight with you, what were you like around your family? Were you miserable? Like, how were you feeling during the shoot? Uh, it's, it's, it's different because, because normally you, you, you put on a mask or like a metaphorical mask when you're working, but I had some part of this mask that I, that I had on me for seven months. So it was, it was different. It was completely different. And, and yes, of course, some, some things were different. I had to wear a hat for, for seven months. Yeah. But, but that was part of the, in a way, part of the pain that I had because I couldn't completely get rid of the character when I, when I went, when, when I went back home. So yeah. It was psycholo psychologically different. 
I oh, would say. I could not do what you do. There's no, <laughs> there's no chance. And to do it so brilliantly, 0% chance. Thank you. You know, um, so I love the camera work in this. It's so fucking good. Um, and you are doing this on a television schedule. I mean, I don't know what your budget was, whatever, but you're making it look so cinematic. Talk about the challenges of doing that with the limitations that you were given. Really, it just meant that one had to be more specific about what it was that I needed to tell the story. Um, I couldn't do any coverage, any kind of shots that I might need, or, you know, I, I just had to um, uh, be specific and confident in the choices that I was making um, and, and follow them through. Um, I don't really see much difference, especially the technology people have in their homes. I don't really see much difference between film and, and television. Um, I, I made it in the same way that I would a movie um, with, as you say, a little less time and so a little more economy. Um, and in a way, I found it quite freeing. I, I kind of found the process to be quite liberating creatively. The aesthetic is a kind of mashup between uh, a man with a movie camera, Ziga Vertov's movie, a man with a movie camera, and Howard Hawks's Scarface and 90s rave culture. Uh, the, the score is by the Chemical Brothers. Oh, we're going to get um, into that, believe and, me. Uh, and so it's this kind of strange uh, kaleidoscopic aesthetic that um, I got really, really excited by. Um Oh, I have so many more follow-ups. I guess let's talk about the soundtrack um, and how you got, I want to make sure I, I forgot his name, uh, Tom Rollins. Yeah, Rollins? Tom Rollins. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how did you get uh, Tom to agree to do this? I met Tom at my first rave in 1989 um, <laughs> above a Saxon shoe shop on the, on, uh, in Islington in London. And, and so I've known him now for quite a long time. Uh, we used to do light shows for um, uh, the Chemical Brothers concerts and so on. Um, and so I've known Tom a while and he did the score, obviously, for a movie I did called Hannah uh, a few years ago. I'm going to pause you there. A fantastic movie. Go on. Thank you. Um, and it felt, you know, looking at the, at the fascist movement and looking at futurism, which was the artistic movement that was going on at the same time, it was all about energy and kinetic energy and, and momentum and movement and smashing the old and, um, and quite revolutionary. And so it felt that techno was somehow the right um, feeling mood for the, for the times, even though if I'd used kind of contemporary music of the period, um, it would have felt old fashioned, but I wanted the audience to get a real sense of what it must have been like living uh, through those through those times, you know. And also, I felt that that it was really important that this story reach a younger audience. You know, I, I, it's not it's not a piece for the for the converted. You know, I'm not I'm not interested in preaching to the converted. I don't think I'm ever going to probably be able to convert a hardcore fascist um, out of fascism. Uh, but there's a whole group of people in the middle, especially younger people who maybe haven't thought about these things, haven't really investigated the roots of fascism in the far right. And, I, and those are the people that I wanted to reach. You haven't done television, I believe, in 20 years. Ooh, and more. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, so w was it a little weird going back? And what was it about this material specifically that said, not only do I want to do this, but I want to give it a huge like chunk of my life for two years or whatever it may be. Mm. Um, when I last did television, it was before I'd ever made a movie and it was for the BBC and you had a budget of $3 million and you didn't have any streaming and you didn't, you know, uh, it was a very different world. Um, now, uh, television has kind of matured into something uh, substantial and 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 very very uh, exciting, uh, and I think it's the right medium for this piece of work. As I say, it's about reaching as many people as possible. It's been really lovely to do a thing that is at the service of something greater than my own sort of arti artistic ambition or no, you're making something important making something that's 
that's about something bigger than than we are, you know. And that felt incredibly good. Um, and and we're determined that it reaches many many people as possible. I, I undertook the work, you know, when I was a teenager, right? Uh, in the growing up in like the eighties. Um, I used to go around going, oh, the police are fascists and Margaret Thatcher is a fascist and, you know, my mum's a fascist for not letting me go out on a Thursday night uh, without really understanding what the word meant. Um, and so with the rise of the far right uh, across the world in Italy and, and, and in England and, and all over the place, um, I felt it was my responsibility to try and understand where that word comes from and what the implications of uh, that um, worldview might be uh, for us today. For both of you, um, you obviously spent a lot of time getting in the head of Mussolini. Um, what were some of the things that really surprised you that you hadn't known before getting ready? Um, I think there's a terrible irony in the fact that one of his main mentors uh, and lovers was a woman called uh, uh, Barbara Safati. Um, and... Uh, and she um, uh, was Jewish. And when the racial laws came in uh, in the 30s, she was um, had to flee the country. Uh, I thought that was uh, uh, something that I, I certainly didn't know. But there was a lot I didn't know about him. Um, uh, he was in Britain, a kind of slightly clownish figure who made ridiculous speeches and threw his arms around. Um, uh, I didn't really understand the um, the fact that he had invented far right populism. Yeah, um, I think that I was really surprised about my my ignorance uh, on history on that particular moment of history. Um, yeah, because. Um, uh, old, old, there is a book also that that, that the, the old um, M is based on a book. No, um, then they 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 made a script, an amazing script. But w while I was reading the book, I was really surprised about my ignorance on on all the facts that 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 happened. Yeah, uh, because I, I I grew up as an anti-fascist. And I'm anti-fascist, and so I I knew a lot of things, but I didn't know how many things I didn't knew, uh, and so that was the big surprise. And of course, um, in a bad way, he was surprising uh, in how violent he was, how criminal it was. Um, yeah. I'm almost out of time with you. And also, I haven't been able to talk about specifics. We'll do that later, you know, like more spoiler things. But you know, I'm a big fan of your work. And I know you've now wrapped on this and have had at least two weeks off, I'm guessing. So what are you working on now uh, for the future? Uh, I've uh, just uh, been shooting a pilot of a show uh, with uh, Michael Fassbender and... and um, Is it called The Agency? It's called The Agency. Yeah, I, I might have uh, done a little research. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So I'm, uh, I've just done that and I'm uh, figuring out my next movie for next year. Do you have like scripts you're looking at or is there one specific one you're hoping to do? There's one specific one I'm hoping to do. Um, uh, there's a couple, but there's one specific one I'm hoping to do. I'm quite enjoying the, um, the challenge of, uh, sort of historical political drama at the moment. I mean, you have a little bit of a history, you know, with, with that, uh, historical characters. Uh, if I, if you don't mind me asking this series, uh, is so good. Um, are you tempted by doing something else in television again, besides obviously the agency, but something that allows you to tell a story? Because one of the things about a movie is you really have to tell the story in two to two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. And with a TV show, you get six hours or seven hours to really expand on a character and pull back layers. Um, it also means that you're shooting for 127 days, yeah. uh, which was 
Um, I mean, I, I got really sick doing this, you know? It, by the way, people don't talk about that. No. I'm not trying to interrupt you, but directors work crazy hours and like, you're not taking a break. No. Yeah. So, but to, you know, I work like 16, 18 hours a day uh, when I'm shooting. And so to do that for 127 days um, meant that, you know, I came to, at one point I said to the producers, listen, I'm sick. We need to stop for a week or just give everyone a break. And they said, no, 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 no. We'll just send you a doctor. And they pumped me with steroids. I mean, it was, it was, it was dreadful. Um, uh, it's interesting. worth it, you know, but yeah, it was no, no, dreadful. Completely. I've also spoken to filmmakers that the day after they wrap on a big shoot, they just collapse and they're in bed for two weeks. Yeah. Cause they're just, they've run on adrenaline for like, you know, a while. Yeah. And adrenaline is poison. I mean, let's, so, uh, so I love the creative challenge of, um, of doing, you know, an eight part series. And I think if you, if you're going to have a sense of authorship of the piece, then you have to do all the episodes. Um, uh, however, the physical challenge and also the domestic challenge in terms of not really seeing your family uh is 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 um testing so i think maybe next year i'll do a movie and then and then right. and then maybe do um uh some more afterwards so with the agency you did the pilot if it i'm not sure if the show got picked up or not not sure yet no yeah if it gets picked up would you do more yeah but not like i didn't do the whole thing you know, I did like two episodes. So that's a six week shoot. That's fine. That's like, that's nothing, you know, um, that's a holiday. I have so many follows, but I'm out of time. I, uh, Luke, I do have a question for you. You're part of the old guard too. Yeah. So uh, I know you guys are doing some additional photography soon. Are you involved in that or no? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, can, what can I say? What can I say? What am I allowed to say? What, what can you tease people? Because it's been a while about the sequel was like shot a while. Like it's been a while for it to come out. What can you tease people about the sequel? What are you looking forward to fans of the original movie seeing? I'm very looking forward to see it. So to watch it. Um, yeah. What, what can I say? It's, it's really cool. <laughs> so the second part and yeah. I'm really, I'm very looking forward to see it, to watch it as the audience, I hope. I'm, I'm also looking forward to watching it. Uh, listen, I got to stop because they're telling me I need to stop. I'm just going to say for everyone watching for the absolutely seek this out. When will it be on in America? Do you know? I'm not sure actually yet. Uh, we haven't got a date for America yet. So I know it comes out. It has a small theatrical release in Italy uh, and Europe in December. Then it's uh, out in Europe in January, uh, beginning of January. I'm not sure when it's, when it's going to be out in America yet. Well, all I can say is brilliant work. Thank you for making it. And I look forward to talking to you guys again in the future. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you.